Passage of the Grand Hanel. The Passage of the Grand Hanel was a battle between troops of the British First and Third Armies and German Empire forces during the Hundred Days Offensive of the First World War. The action took place in and around the Belgian municipality of Hanels between 5 and 7 November 1918. General Horn's objective was to cross the French border into Belgium and forge a passage through the parallel rivers of the Grand Hanel and Petit Hanel, moving the battlefront towards the line between Mons on the left and Aulnois on the right. Background In October 1918, the first and third British armies had broken through the Hindenburg Line at the Second Battle of Cambrai. This collapse forced the German High Command to accept that the war had to be ended. Together with the failing German morale, this convinced many Allied commanders and political leaders that the war could be brought to an end in 1918. Previously, all efforts had been concentrated on building up forces to mount a decisive attack in 1919. In the aftermath of the Battle of Veilchens on 1 November, the German army was in retreat, to such an extent that Field Marshal Haig ordered a general advance, telling divisions to act vigorously on their own initiative so as to keep the Germans from establishing a firm line. On 4 November, the 3rd and 4th Canadian divisions arrived on both sides of the Veilchens Mons Road, their front extended from Condé in the north to Marchapont in the south. The 56th London Infantry Division and 11th Northern Division were further south, their front extended from Rombies to Genlain, with 3rd Army on the right. Battle 5 November Patrols from the 87th Battalion Canadian Grenadier Guards, a unit of the 4th Canadian Division, crossed the Onel River, marking the liberation by the Canadians of the first part of occupied Belgium. The 56th London Infantry Division attempted to take Hanels. The 13th and 14th London Regiments failed to clear the area. However, the 1-5th London Regiments successfully secured Angro in a tough battle along the Grand Hanel. To the south, the troops of the 11th Northern Division had crossed the Onel River at Seberg the previous day. Four battalions advanced through Royson, the 9th Yorkshire Hussars West Yorkshire Regiment, 6th Lincolnshire Regiment, 7th South Staffordshire Regiment, and 9th Sherwood Foresters Nottingham and Derbyshire Regiment. German artillery shelled the village, despite the fact that the village was crowded with civilians. Further south, General Byng's 3rd Army completely cleared the enemy from Fort de Mormel. The fighting was conducted in cold conditions, and General Horn became concerned that muddy roads would prevent the advance. However, there was to be no let-up and both Roman 22 Corps and Canadian Corps were to continue the advance the following day, their objective being the railway line between Mons and Aulnois to the south. 6 November Roman 22 Corps resumed their attack at 5.30, but immediately ran into strong German resistance. When the 11th Northern Infantry Division finally reached the left bank of the Grand Hanel River, they were unable to cross due to heavy enemy fire from the wooded slopes on the opposite bank, the Bois Calaquibic Danger. When troops of the 56th London Infantry Division crossed the river to the east of Angro, they were immediately driven back to the left bank by a counterattack from Bois de Beaufort. Further north, men of the 56th Division crossed the Grand Hanel twice at Anger reaching the high ground between Anazes and Basiques. Again they were driven back by the enemy, but managed to establish a bridgehead on the right bank of the river. During the night the 63rd Royal Naval Division came forward from a welcome rest at St. Paul, in relief of the 168th Brigade 56th Division, west of Bois d'Audregnes. The 56th Division was then on a single brigade front, with the 11th Division on the right and the 63rd on the left. To the north, the Canadian Corps had more success. The 4th Canadian Division advanced through more favorable terrain, allowing the deployment of artillery that helped in the capture of Quivre Chain on the French side of the river. Pushing east, the Canadians crossed the border, forced a passage across the Grand Honel between Anger and Quivrain, and went on to take part of the village of Basiques, which lies on the sister river of La Petite Honel, 
about 1.5 miles north of Anger, where the 56th Division had made their bridgehead. ACX would be a strategic loss for the Germans, posing a threat to their line of retreat from the attack of Roman 22 Corps in the south. This battle would be the last feat of arms of the 4th Canadian Division in the war. During the night of 6-7 November, the division was replaced by the 2nd Canadian Division. Further north, beyond the Mons Valentins railway line, the 3rd Canadian Division continued their advance between the River Escout and the Mons Condé Canal, reaching the outskirts of the French village of Crespin. Floating footbridges were established on the Onel and Honel rivers. Major Dudley Ward describes the action from the perspective of the 56th Division. The German rearguards were only able, on especially favorable positions, to check the advance of a few divisions. On the whole, the rearguards were being thrown back on the main retreating force. The roads were packed with enemy troops and transport, and the real modern cavalry, the low-flying aeroplanes, swooped down on them, with bomb and machine guns spreading panic and causing the utmost confusion. During the night of 6-7 November, the 63rd Division was put into line on the front of the 168th Brigade, and the 169th was relieved by the 167th Brigade. The 56th Division was then on a single brigade front, with the 11th Division on the right and the 63rd on the left. At dawn on the 7th, patrols found that the enemy was still in front of them, and at 9 a.m. the brigade attacked with the 8th Middlesex on the right and the 7th Middlesex on the left. They swept on through the northern part of the wood, and by 10.30 a.m., the 7th Middlesex entered the village of Anazes. The Petit Hanels River was crossed, and the village of Montignes taken in the afternoon. But after the Bavihenses Road was crossed, opposition stiffened, and both artillery and machine gun fire became severe. A line of outposts held the east of the road for the night. 7 November The 7th and 8th Middlesex regiments advanced through Onazes, crossing the Petit Hanel into Montigny. The 2nd Canadian Division liberated the rest of Basics and the village of Alouges. The 2nd and 3rd Canadian Divisions released Quivrain together and captured 500 prisoners. The 3rd Canadian Division continued its progression and liberated Lacway at Henses, while just before midnight the 2nd Division took the villages of Bois de Bausu, Puti Hornu, Bois de Epinois, and a portion of Bois de Levic. In each village delivered, Canadian soldiers were warmly welcomed as liberators. The troops then entered a densely populated area, where there were many mining villages. They found themselves facing the German army, which was retreating while carrying out delaying actions. Meanwhile, rumors were already circulating that peace was imminent. Major Dudley Ward continues his description. Explosions and fires, which were continually observed at night behind the enemy lines, were more numerous on the night of 7th-8, and when the advance was continued at 8 a.m., the two Middlesex battalions occupied the villages of Athais and Fate le Franc with practically no opposition. By nightfall, outposts were covering Petit Mar and Fate, Tri Eugene Sart, Furlebre, and Rachan. The road situation was worse than ever. Railhead was at Aubigneo back, and supply lorries were unable to proceed any farther than the Honel River owing to the destruction of the bridges. Rain fell all the time and cross country tracts were impassable. All traffic was thrown on the main roads, which to the west of the river were now in such a state that all supplies were late. Arrangements were made for aeroplanes to drop food to the advance troops, but fortunately this was found unnecessary. The enemy was now in full retreat on the whole of the British front. To the south the Guards Division entered Maubuge, and to the north the Canadians were approaching Mons. The 56th Division marched forward through the villages of Coron, Rieu de Berry, Quevy le Grand, and Quevy le Petit, and by the evening were on the line of the mons Montbuge Road behind a line of outposts held by the 1st London Red. Analysis Although the main attack on the 6th had not been a total success for the Allied forces, as day became night, the evening patrols soon discovered that the enemy had indeed begun a retreat, meeting little opposition along the length of the 1st Army's front. During the night, 
the 56th Division crossed the Grand Hanel, occupying the high ground northeast of Anger, unlike the actions during the previous day when they were twice forced to retreat from the same region. This advance went unopposed, setting the tone for the next few days. The advance was now continuous and almost unopposed by enemy infantry, however, isolated machine gun detachments and sporadic artillery fire continued to cause casualties as what had been a battle became a pursuit. As Horn had predicted, the progress of the advance was mainly governed by the state of the roads and the ability to get rations to the forward troops. The Canadian troops reached Mons late on the night of 10 November. Order of Battle the order of battle for this phase of the final advance included units of General Horn's 1st Army and General Byng's 3rd Army.